Logan, in order to get started with Word, let's look at where we find it. We'll open it, and then I'm going to spend a few moments showing you the parts of the window and giving you their names. That way we'll have a common vocabulary as we move forward. All right. Okay. So I'm going to come down here in the bottom left corner. This is what we call the Start button. Mm -hmm. If I click on that, you'll notice that I have a list of apps, and they're in alphabetical order. We do have recently added up here, and as you use things, sometimes they'll start showing up, but Word's not showing up, and it starts with W. So I'm just going to type a W, and immediately I get a list of items that start with W. So if I needed a smaller list, I could type out the word Word, and it would filter it, but I don't need to do that. So I'm going to click on it here, and Word's going to open up. Now, how do you navigate through Word? Okay, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to mm -hmm. show you this as we move forwards, but first of all, we want to open a file. Mm -hmm. Now, as you may notice, down here I have recent files, and you also have a category called pinned. You can eventually pin a file if you want to, one that maybe you use a lot. Uh, if somebody shared one with you, you have shared with me. Now, the one we actually want to open is in the recent list, but let's suppose it's not. If the file is not listed here, where do you think you would go to open a file? Oh, well, the open folder. Right. Over here to the left, we have several items, and one of them is open. I clicked on open, and you'll notice that you can look in various places for your files. You do have a recent category. It's defaulted to that. Um, you have a shared with me. If you have a OneDrive, then it can give you that information or any other types of cloud sharing sites that you might have. Um, I also can look in this PC. I can add a place if it's not here, like a particular drive, or I can browse. I'm going to go with Browse. Notice I get the Open dialog box, and it's looking in this PC, the Documents folder. Now, actually, the folder I'm looking for is stored on the desktop. So I'm going to come over here and choose Desktop. I know it's in this folder and it's one of our course files. So I'll open this up, and here's Getting Started with Word 2019. That's the folder I know it's stored in, and we're wanting Building with Heart. So I will just double-click it, and it opens up. Okay, so if I already know the name of my document, can I just type the name in the search bar and it will pop up? Okay, so search bar, do you mean this search bar here? No, I'm talking about the search bar when you first opened up Word. Okay, so you're talking about back here. If I click on File, mm -hmm. we were back here, and I'll click on Home. That's the screen we had before, right? Okay, so this search bar. Yes. Yes, but not always. Mm -hmm. You will find files based on where they're stored. So if it's stored somewhere else, it might not automatically show up here. But let's see with this one. Notice I started typing Building with Heart, and there it pops up. So in this case, this file, it works. So we have our file, and let's just explore what else we have in the Word window. Up at the top of the window, I have what is called the title bar, and it gives me the name of the file. Over on the left, I have some saving options, and this is the Quick Access Toolbar. The Quick Access Toolbar right now just has the Save button, and as we work forward, you'll notice there's a grayed out undo and a grayed out redo. As I start doing things, the undo will become available to me. So we'll see that as we move forwards. Over here on the right, it tells me whose account I'm in. I also have my minimize button, which if you've dealt with computers very much, then the minimize might be familiar to you. But if you click on it, notice my files down here now. In fact, my whole Word window is down here, and if I click on it, it pops back up. I also have this button, which right now is called Restore. Mm -hmm. If I click it, the window does not take up the full screen, and if I click it, the button is now called Maximize, and it takes the window full screen again. And then over here we have the X. We're not going to click the X right now, because that would close Word, and we don't want to close Word, but that's what that one does. So below the title bar, we have the ribbon, and the ribbon has various icons on it. These are different functions Word will do. I'm on the Home tab right now. You'll notice I have other tabs. If I click Insert, I get different icons related to Insert and Design and so forth. 
All right, so let's go back to the Home tab. And notice on the tabs, we have groupings. For example, this is the clipboard grouping, and it's in its own little box. We have a line that defines it. And then there is a font grouping and paragraph and so forth. Now, why do some of the groupings have arrows at the bottom right corner? These are what we call launchers. Mm -hmm. If I click on that, what will happen is a dialog box with more options pops up. Sometimes you're going to want to do something that's on the grouping. Sometimes you need a little bit more information. So you can come here and find other features. Now you may have noticed that there's obviously more to this document than we can see on screen. And I do have a scroll bar over here to the right. I can click on this rectangle, it's called the slider, and drag down to see more of my document. Or I can use these arrows and click them to move at a slower pace or a more incremental pace. And there is an up and a down. If for some reason your page is wider than your screen, maybe you've zoomed in on something really close, you would have a left to right scroll bar too that would work the same way, just moving left and right. So I'm gonna scroll back to the top and let's look at what else is available to us as far as information. One of the reasons I knew that there was more information on this document is down here in my status bar. So notice it says page one of two. It lets me know how many pages I have. I also have the number of words in the actual document. In some cases, that's kind of important to know. Mm -hmm. Over here on the right, I have view buttons. So there's something called the read mode. If I click that, you'll notice that things disappear. What is missing? Do you notice? It's a lot bigger and the ribbons are gone. Yes, the ribbons are gone. Now to get back, I just press the escape button on my keyboard and I'm right back where I was, which is the print layout view, which is this button right here. So if I click it, notice nothing changes because we're there. And then the last one is the web layout. And this is what it would look like if we save this as a web page for the internet. Oh, that's neat. Yes, it's very helpful. Now I'm gonna click back on print layout because that's the one I prefer to work in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one more thing I want us to look at is the search or the tell me box. Now when you asked me earlier if you could search for a file using their name, I thought you were talking about here. And actually this is more about searching for how to do something. So especially when you're new with Word, you may know Word does something, but you can't remember where. So for example, maybe I wanna zoom in. You know, I mentioned if you have your screen zoomed up. So I'm gonna type zoom. And notice I don't even have to type the whole word. It automatically found zoom. And it's even given me some zoom options here. Now I could choose these or I could click on zoom itself and it pops up a Zoom dialog box and notice it gives me percentages. It also gives me the option to change the percentage manually, so if I don't like the options available to me. Now, what was the Get Help button under the Search tab? Okay, so when I clicked here and I typed Zoom, you mean down here? Yes. Okay, so let me finish typing Zoom so it'll see the whole thing, because it says right now, Get Help on Zoom. I don't think we need to go to the zoo today. Now it says get help on Zoom. And if I point to it, notice there's an arrow off to the side and it's pointing me to some of the help topics that Word offers. So I have a video, I have information on where I can find Zoom in the document. It looks like this is looking at the view tab on the ribbon and it's giving me just various things about it. And notice there's more results for Zoom. If I click that, it opens up a help pane that has defaulted to Zoom because I was looking for information on Zoom. And I can click on a help topic, it pops up, it tells me about it. And notice in this case, it's giving me a Zoom that's on the status bar, which is exactly where I wanna go next, so perfect. Now this pane just pops up when I need it and it will have different features in it. I don't need it anymore, I'm gonna click X. Now that I've come out of the help pane, what it was pointing me to is this zoom bar in the status bar. So you don't have to pop up a dialog box. You do have it right here available to you. And you can click anywhere on the bar and notice it can zoom in rather large. That's 292%. I can click down here, bring it down to a smaller size. And I can increase it using the plus sign 
or the minus sign. Typically, you probably are going to work in the 100% to 120% range. Mm -hmm. Just depends on what it is you're trying to do. So those are the parts of the word window, Logan, and hopefully that'll help you follow along during the course. Good deal.